Coach Garland, 2014, Flow Nationals, first off coach. Do you like the rules here? I think it's awesome. I mean, there's no better way to get a kid prepared for college than to have riding time. And the other thing I love about this tournament that I've seen is the referees um, calling takedowns by the edge. That You never see that in high school. I mean, we're all over the country watching high school matches. The real edge rules are in play here. So at least in my opinion, I, I think it's phenomenal. I think it only helps the kids. Uh, and as a coach, it's fun to watch. So as far as the actual tournament, the way it's run, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's why I drove five and a half hours this morning to get here because it's just so much, it's coach friendly. I was down at the NHSCA's last weekend and I'm telling you, one of the rounds lasted like six hours. I think I blacked out twice. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you know, this, like it's civil. You know where you're at. You know what rounds are up. They break it down. It's easy to follow. It's easy to see. Comfortable loge. Oh, it's great, man. Food. They even had coffee in there. Yeah. yeah it was tearing it's just up. what you need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Looking at, you know, the needs for UVA, where would you guys say you're in need what weight classes well i mean you know i never like to do the weight class thing just because you know there might be some guys on the current roster that might take exception to that you know so i just say we're looking for everybody and we're looking for guys that fit the the virginia way and what that means is mind body academics relationship compete in such a way it's a lot of things i just threw out pretty quickly but essentially we're looking for kids who are trying to uh, be excellent in everything they do okay so that means they really do t take their academic serious that means they they, they actually want to they care about relationship and not party. And there's two different things there, you know. So it's hard to it's hard to figure that out just watching wrestling. So we try to watch everything. Try to watch them after the match. Try to watch them how they I mean, when they go up in the stands after a bad loss. How they interact with their coach and their parents. Um, we're just looking for great kids in terms of uh, the intangibles. Because frankly, anybody can show a single leg. These guys are all talented enough to be here and be, be, to have all the accolades they have. You're trying to look for that something extra a little bit, and it's not an exact science. And that's why everybody here, if any, if any coach. Here, tells you they got to figure it out they're full of baloney i've been doing it 14 years and i'm still trying to figure it out so gonna have the preseason number 165 pounds in my eyes i don't know if, thanks bro I, well, I, I mean that guy's pretty I hope good so. yeah how hungry do you think he is after his ncaa tournament well yeah he was just in the room i walked in the restroom yesterday uh eight o'clock in the morning he's in there by himself i mean he's just a, he's a he's a tremendous worker He's ticked. He's really, really ticked. I mean, I actually had to talk him out after the third and fourth match. He was beating himself up so bad. I'm like, hey, man, let me get in there. Let me say a couple things, you know, because he was just so hard on himself. He wants to be – that's uh, – fourth place is unacceptable to him. He wants to win a national title, and we're hoping that that mentality then seeps into the rest of the guys because our 23rd place finish at Nationals wasn't good enough. It's unacceptable. we got to do way better than that. It's the fourth top 25 finish in five years, and so what? You know, we want way more than that, and so we're not happy about it either. Either. So we're, that's what we're all working towards. You guys have done an excellent job of recruiting Ohio, recruiting Pennsylvania. You know, what do you guys got to do? What needs to change to go from 23rd to a top 10 team? Yeah, well, I think it's it's mentality, it's attitude, it's 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 having that attitude that Nick Solzer has. That when he goes out there, he's looking to score as many points as possible. He's looking to dominate every position, and he's looking to have fun. I mean, before the ACC finals, he turned to me, which he wrestled awesome, by the way, won his first ACC championship. He turned to me and goes, "Most fun I'm ever going to have in my life, Coach." And I'm tearing up watching this kid. I'm thinking, "Yeah, you're right. You know what, man? It's supposed to be fun. Yeah, you're supposed to enjoy yourself. You're a performer. Go perform. That's your stage out there. We need that to trickle down a little bit." We a lot of guys seated out there that were I think were holding a little bit they were they were they, they wanted it so bad that it made them tight you know we want to be able to wrestle free out there you know um, and that's that's what we're looking for for our whole program looking at some guys who had disappointing finishes to the year you know if you look at I mean I, I mean everybody on your team was disappointed because nobody took first at the national yeah. tournament yeah but like Gus Seiko battling injuries all yeah, year he was what do you say yeah. to a guy like Gus is going into his final year well we have a meeting next week I haven't had a meeting yet we, we're actually sitting down as a staff with Gus next week and I'm excited to hear what he has to say and I'm excited to unload some stuff but yeah he, he was one of those guys that you know look everybody out there's hurt so he's not going to make an excuse about the injury but it was severe I mean it was a real deal injury that he was dealing with and, and it, it it definitely hindered him and so now moving forward all we can do is say okay forgive yourself but don't forget Forget. For, forgive, don't forget. Meaning every day, how you felt at national should be fueling you in the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you train. Everything you do is, is on the mindset of at the NCAA tournament, I'm going to be on the top step. That's all there is to it. And everything that goes into that, you have to be obsessed about. You have to be, everybody says, Garland, you're crazy, you're obsessed. Yeah, I'm freaking obsessed, man. I don't want to lose either. So my freaking wife told me, she's like, you better get up to Flow Nationals. You better drive your butt up there. I mean, that's the whole family's in, in on it. I think my kids are pissed that we didn't do better. So it's like, that's what we want everybody to be to be concerned about in everything they do. I look at the guys you have on the team, and I just, I just look at the whole UVA way and the culture you've changed. First off, 
That's cool. Are you the only national finalist ever? Me and one other guy from 1957. Yeah. <laughs> but you look at that, like the culture, how you've changed it, and uh, I don't think a lot of people know UVA. Thomas Jefferson founded the university. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's one of the place. one of the best business schools in the world. Yep. So it, it's an unbelievable place. How do you change the culture? How you changed it? Well, it, it started with uh, Chris Henrick in, in that first recruiting class. Chris Henrick, Sean Harris, Nick Nelson, um, and again that excellence. I mean, Chris works on Wall Street. Sean Harris got a master. He got a double degree from UVA. Nick Nelson's an options trader in Chicago with an MS in commerce degree I mean my point is is that they actually wanted to do everything right they didn't just want to do a couple things right they wanted to do everything right once that got in place it started to multiply and then we got the Nick Solzers of the world and we got you know Derek Valenis of the world and guys like that and so we need more of them you know that's that that's the that's the goal so the guys recruiting guys is that's how you changed it yeah, it was bringing in, I mean, well, I mean, I, I could go all day on the whole how it happened, but that's where it started. That was the ground floor, and then getting the right staff, and um, then it was hard work, and me as a coach, learning from my mistakes. I mean, when I first got there, I was uh, 29 years old, didn't know my butt from my elbow, but thought I knew everything, right? I mean, young young kid, get in there and get this dream job, and go figure, the more my life changed, the more the program got better. The more the changes in my life got more positive, the more positive the team resulted from it. So. You know, I, I credit a lot of things, but I think a lot of it came from a leadership model that's going to say, hey, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to live out what I'm asking you guys to do. And that wasn't always the case. And praise God that happened. In 2006, my life changed, and that's when the program changed. I think it's directly related. Uh, you got some consolations in there. I know you got some recruiting to do. You yep. got anything else for me? I just always got to give my, my daughters a shout out. My little honey biscuit, Grace. Don't beat up your sister tonight. Sit. Love you. Hey, thanks for the time. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.